Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of us. Amen. Amen. When Jesus was on this planet called Earth, he operated as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit. He didn't operate as God anointed by the Holy Spirit. Because God doesn't need to be anointed. God is anointing and God is anointed. So God does not need to be anointed. And there is a reason why he operated the way he operated. And when we see him in the four documents called the gospel. Many times we see the miracles. Many times we see the signs. Many times we see the wonders. But we never come to an understanding that the miracles we see in the life and the ministry of Jesus started when he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And this is important because it will help me and you. Because you see, Jesus did not come just to do the miracles, for example. Jesus came to show us a way of doing the miracles he did, or connecting with the Father the way he connected. And that's why one of the emphasis, one of the emphasis that Jesus gave to his disciples before he left is in the book of Matthew, from verses 18. And I want you to listen very carefully to almost every word I'm going to say. I don't know where you are with God. I don't know where you want to go with God. I don't know how you want to excel with this God. I don't know what you want to experience with God. But if you want to receive something from God and to experience something with God and you want to work and allow God to work through you. Then I'm going to ask you to pay close attention to what I'm saying. Because many times we see people that are used by God. And we put them on a pedestal someplace. And we give them our worship thinking that they are the great one. And yet that's not the way Jesus ordained us to operate. Are you hearing me? And so it is important that you pay close attention. When Jesus was on this planet, he operated as a man. 
anointed by the Spirit of God. When Jesus was on this planet called Earth for 33 and a half years of his life, and especially the three and a half years of his life, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. I, I hear in me. The Bible teaches us in the book of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. From verses 5. The Bible says that let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let this understanding be in you, allow it. You don't have it, but allow it. Adopt, connect, submit to this kind of understanding. He goes on to say the next verse. And he says, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verses 7. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Verses 8 says, and being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So in these scriptures that we have read, we see the picture of the image of the person of Jesus. And they are telling us when Jesus came down here, he emptied himself of deity. And he became a man. Are you following? And it had to take God after that. Verses 9. Wherefore God has highly exalted him. So it was later on that God exalted him again. So everything he did on this earth. For 33 and a half years. He operated as a human person. And the Bible teaches me in the book of Hebrews chapter 2. That he was tempted like I am tempted. Give me Hebrews chapter 2 from verses 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. No, again, he I, I, I following because it is important for you to understand to follow this. So as much as we have this flesh, it took the same flesh that you have. It took the same blood like you have. No had the same emotions like you have. And the Bible goes on to say, verses, give me 16. 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. But he took on him the seed of Abraham, talking about us. Now, the next verse says something, verse 17. 
I want you to read, please. Everyone. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Amen. Then look at the next verse, verses 18. For in that he himself suffered being tempted. Why? He took on my flesh. And he saw what I saw on a daily basis. He felt what I feel on a day to the basis. There was a temptation. Every place he turned. But the source of his strength and the source of his breakthrough is the yielding of himself to the Holy Spirit. Let me say it again. The source of his strength and his breakthrough were through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, our Lord and Savior could achieve nothing, do nothing. But with the Holy Spirit. He was able to bring his body and his feelings into the subjection of God Almighty. But the temptation were very real. One day he was preaching. And then a woman stood up in the crowd and said, Blessed are they. <laughs> right in the church. Think about that. Right in the church. <laughs> Somebody stood up and says, Oh, Jesus, man, blessed. Uh, uh, guess <laughs> Think. But the source of his strength, the source of his power, is in the Holy Spirit. And if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit to have a breakthrough, I need the Holy Spirit more than ever before in my life to, 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 to have a breakthrough. I'll rather, I'll rather depend on the Holy Spirit than depend on all the prophets of the world. I'll rather depend on the Holy Spirit than depend on all the pastors in the world. I'll rather glory in the Holy Spirit than glory in in my church than glory in any man is anointing than glory in any man is gifting because at the end of the day none of us have nothing in the words of Jesus he said without me you can do nothing 
things. I am the vine. You are the branches. And he went to say, he went on to say, but every branch in me that bears not fruit, I will take it away. And then he went on to say in John chapter 15, he says, Abide in me and I in you. For without me, you can do nothing. And so don't tell me, my mighty man of God, my mighty prophet. Yes, we honor them. But you need to come to a place where you honor the Holy Spirit in your life more than anything else in your life. Because these men come and these men go. These women come and these women go. Churches come and churches go. But the Holy Spirit will remain with us until eternity. Let me say something to you and I want you to open your ears. Very closely. When the Holy Spirit comes in you, he comes in your spirit. And it stays in your spirit forever. So when you die, the Holy Spirit stays in your spirit. Very important for you to understand. And so we see Jesus. You look at his life. Bible says when he was about 30 years of age, he came at River Jordan and he was baptized. And the Bible teaches that all of a sudden the heavens were opened. And then he saw, John testified, then John said, I saw the Spirit of God like a dove coming upon Jesus. And then he had a voice at the same time saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately after the baptism, the Bible teaches us in the book of Luke chapter 4 from verses 1. And then Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, then the tempter began to speak. I, 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 I follow him. But, but before that, we have no scripture says, and then Jesus was laid. We heard his voice when he was 12 years of age. When he was in the temple, in the book of Luke chapter 2, we never heard his voice again until when he's 30 years of age. And that took about how many years? That's about 18 years of his life. No miracle, no sign, no wonder. What was he doing at that time? He was running a carpentry shop. I follow him. I follow him. And so, the spirit drives him to the wilderness and he begins to pray and fast. And then you come to verse 12 of Luke chapter 14. Verse 12. And this is what it says. Verse 12. Luke chapter 4. Verse 12. The devil is still, the devil is still tempting him. You come to verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And verses 
14 is very important. And this is what it says. And then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Do you see that in the scripture? So they are showing you a journey to his public ministry. In Luke chapter 2, 12 years of age, he's not performing miracles, but he's filled with God's wisdom. Luke chapter 3, the heavens open, the Holy Spirit descends. Luke chapter 4, verses 1, the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness. Luke chapter 4, verses 14, he returns in the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen what I'm going to say. Not in the power of Jesus. And Jesus returned. In the power, mark that, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus returned. They are talking about Jesus the man. If they had mentioned Jesus the Christ, Christ doesn't need to be anointed. Because the word Christ means the anointed and is anointing. They are talking about the at every time they mention Christ. They are talking about deity. I, I following. And so Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. Mark that. So everywhere he went, the Bible says he went and fame followed after him. In the power of of the Holy Spirit. So everywhere he went and he preached, it was in the power of the Holy Spirit. When he prayed, it was in the power of the Holy Spirit. When he called upon God, it was in the power of the Holy Spirit. Every step, the power of the Holy Spirit. Every direction, the power of the Holy Spirit. When he laid hands, he did it in the power of the Holy Spirit. When he spoke, he spoke in the power of the Holy Spirit. When he prayed, he prayed in the power of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is not a church. The Holy Ghost is not a person. The Holy Ghost is not a prophet. The Holy Ghost is God's is Spirit, which Jesus promised to all His children. If Jesus was to play a keyboard, this was. These will be the words. He played the keyboard in the power of the Holy Spirit. So which means the keys he played would be keys anointed, his hands anointed to by the Holy Spirit. If Jesus was a psalmist in the church, this word will be spoken about him that he sang worship in the power of the Holy Spirit. If Jesus was to preach, these would be the words. He preached in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, and that is important to understand. It's a neighbor. Jesus did not preach in the power of the flesh. How I pray that we preachers will preach in the power of the Holy Spirit. How I pray that you will pray in the power of the Holy Ghost. How I pray that when you get the microphone to sing, you will sing in the power of the Holy Ghost. That when you go on your business, you do the business in the power of the Holy Ghost. And if you do things in the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will break yokes around you. 
the Holy Ghost will destroy yokes around you. The Holy Ghost will fight battles around you. The Holy Ghost will reveal to you secrets of how to do things that you cannot do with your natural mind. And, and that's the secret of his success. And when you look throughout scripture, you'll find out that's how Paul succeeded. That's how Peter succeeded. That's how men and women of God in the Bible were able to do ministry not in their power but in the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's where we need to come because when the Holy Spirit is at work you don't have to sing too long. Every time you sing and is there he will simply show up. You don't need 20 songs. Sometimes one song is just enough. Sometimes 20 minutes is just enough. And the rest the Holy Ghost will take over. And that's why every time you want to do something, minister, pray, men call upon the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? That's why when you look at Genesis, God could not create anything. And that's all I'm going to say. Until the spirit hoped over the water. And the Bible says to us in the book of Genesis. In the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And listen to what the Bible says next. And the spirit of God. And the spirit of God. And the spirit of God. Look, and the earth, look at those words. And the earth was without form and void. The earth was formless. And it was empty. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the darkness they are talking about is not dark of the night. They are talking about power of evil. It's upon the face of the deep. And then the spirit of the Lord hoofed over over the formless earth mm. over the void Earth. of a earth that had no form had nothing substantial and when the spirit of God moved verses 2 verse 3 and then God said let there be light and there was Light. Now the light they are talking about is not the light of the sun. The light they are talking about is Jesus, the light of the world. It was the Spirit of God that brought Jesus into our darkness. And Mary said, How shall this thing be since I don't know any man? And the angel said, The Spirit of God shall come upon you. And when the Spirit of God comes upon you, 
the son of God shall be formed um, in your womb. Wa no, no, no. Let me quote it like he says. The spirit of God shall come upon you. And the power of the Almighty shall overshadow thee. And therefore that thing that shall be born into you shall be called. Shall be called. Shall be called. Shall be called. The son of the highest. And then Mary said, let it be done unto me as you say. And later on when you go farther, these were the words of Elizabeth. Blessed is she that believes. For there shall be a performance of those things that we have spoken of are by the Lord. But that's not the end of the story. As Jesus was formed in the womb, the life of the world formed by the spirit of God he went and visited Elizabeth and the Bible says the moment he greeted Elizabeth the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped for joy and then the spirit of God came upon Elizabeth from the womb of Mary from the light of the world there was a transfer of that same light of that same grace and that's what it is all about that when I'm anointed by the Holy Spirit and your womb is ready something must form are you hearing me Sandra? yes and that's why it is important for us to have ministers that are anointed by the Holy Spirit because there's transfer of spirits. So it is important when you stand before people, what kind of spirit are you operating in? For oh, like Mary, who are filled with Jesus. But, but let me take it a little bit further. Who are filled with the word because Jesus is the word. Not only filled with the word. Because the word without the spirit. Is nothing. But the word. With the spirit. Equals Jesus. And when Jesus is back. Yes, was I. Power must come. Healing must come. Deliverance must come. Grace must come. Glory must come. Can I hear somebody say amen? Amen. And so the spirit hovered over. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And I love what the next verse says. Beautiful. 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 And that it was God. And because of that light, God divided the light from darkness. You call the light out of darkness. You don't need a man <laughs> to be the God you are. But in your mercy you've called us your own. <laughs> you are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. And so Jesus returned. 
in the power Mumani. mark that and Pastor Kazi will return and mm. Jocelyn return oh, and, 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 and Emmanuel return will not be powerful Amang. if we have people e, e, that have returned that, uh, that sister so and so stands and brother so and so stand and somebody plays this and, and somebody says something uh, in the power of the in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I get what I'm saying. And the Bible says when he returned, he, he, his fame went throughout. Which simply tells me that I, if I want to be known, if I want the world to know me, I don't have to seek any man's glory. I don't have to seek any man's presence. No, 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 no. Because people raise you and people put you down at the same time. But when God raises you, nobody is able to put you down so, so, so if I'm going to be raised by God, I have to come to a place when my praying is by the Spirit, when my serving is by the Spirit, when my preaching is by the Spirit, when I come to church and I'm a greeter at the door, my greeting is by the Holy Spirit. That's what will touch and leave a last impression. Many times we have entertainers, not men and women that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Many times we have people who want to prove a point that they can do something. But but if we want to be famous in God, the pathway to that fame is by the Holy Ghost. But you know something, even in that same chapter, the devil gave Jesus a, <laughs> a preposition. And so it's Jesus. I want you to go with me. I want to show something. And the Bible says, he show him the entire world and the kings of the world in a moment. And says Jesus, all these and more will I give to you. If you will bow down and worship me. And so Satan can give you something. But it can't last. But when the Holy Spirit gives you something, it will last. When the Holy Spirit gives you a name, that name will last. When the Holy Ghost gives you the grace, that grace will last. When the Holy Ghost opens the door, that door will still open. When the Holy Ghost introduces you, then you will be accepted and your visit will have a lasting impression upon the hearts of men and women. And Jesus returns in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says when he returned his fame went throughout Everybody heard about him. Everybody knew him. Because it's the Holy Spirit that has the ability to introduce you. Listen to what I'm going to say to the hearts of people. And so Jesus returned. The Bible teaches. And after 
the fame went throughout. You come to verses 15 now. And this is what the Bible says, verses 15. And he taught, listen to this. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. Enemies and friends alike. And then from there it comes to his home place where he grew up. Nazareth. Nazareth. The Bible says, as his custom was, he went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up for to read like I'm standing up. So that means people were seated. But remember, the Bible says, as his custom was, so that means every Sabbath, for the last 18 years of his life in his home church every Sabbath in his home church every Sabbath now this is important he never missed his church his pastor could give an account if you ask him about Jesus, he will say, well, Jesus comes every Sunday. Say, neighbor, about you. I have a feeling that every Sunday you would see Jesus' tithe. I, I, I just a feeling. Come not to even even his We admire his anointing. Now listen what I'm going to say. When the anointing of God comes, <laughs> you know it sits. It sits upon your spirit. And so there has to be a connection <laughs> between your spirit <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. No more you are at all. My anointing that I have sits upon my spirit. And so for me to give you my anointing, this is what I'm going to say. You must have my spirit. My spirit. Wow. Yes. Yes. You see, 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 no, when he requested for the, the double portion of his spirit. And then he says, it is difficult. But when you see me go, maybe you'll have it. <laughs> it is important. <laughs> okay, so said, okay, let me provide that in the scripture. Go to the book of John. <laughs> John chapter 20. Verses 21. And when he has said, he put it on them. He said, he said, so he put it on them. Spirit that was in him. He put it on them. But that was not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why for you to receive God's Spirit, you must be born again. And God gives you His Spirit, or His nature. And when you receive that, then the Holy Spirit can come and sit you. It can connect with the Spirit of God that is in you. Yeah. Now before you get so the whole spirit cannot come. Because in you there is another spirit. Because 
because you have another father. Your father's the king. And sit with the for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7 Because the carnal man is enmity against God, for is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8 So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verses 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God was Now, if any man have known the spirit of Christ, is none of his. So, Bokubera would have Christo. Now, for it to be on the side of Christ, you must have the spirit of Christ. Both must be in you. You must have his spirit. Now, to be his. They are the same. 